3 Tokyo Drift. Hello and welcome. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you our Slash Tube special episode, Lockdown 3 Tokyo Drift. Or as will be apparent, Lockdown 3, 28 months later. It definitely feels like 28 months later. It does, doesn't it? Sean. Well, um, so with our third lockdown entry here at Slash Tube, we look forward to discussing films um, without a third entry. So films that have had a first and second entry only. Um, and I, we were, I was going through this list and there's a ton of them where I think, oh yeah, what about that? What about that? Like Bridget Jones. No, a third one came out. You know, what about this? What about that? Like, oh yeah, a third one was sort of put in in the last couple of years. There was a third Bridget Jones. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bridget, Bridget Jones baby. Yeah. So a lot of them have just oh, been God. throwing the threequels in there, right? Um, so, and, and, so I have Dan and Ryan with me today, slash Duke co-host. How are you guys doing? Oh, very Good. Well, thank you. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be recording this episode because I don't want to be in lockdown. So I don't, don't you know, really think we should be here. But I don't <laughs> want to have to do a lockdown four. You know, I don't well, want to have to do. I'm very grateful to have you guys uh, more available than usual, um, or at least a more positioned to turn on the computer and microphone than usual uh, and jump in. <laughs> so, so with that said, this is this is um, you're both dupes today, aren't you? Because you you both don't know what three call idea we'll be going through today. Um, do you have any guesses as to what it might be? So a film that hasn't had well, a third entry, but probably should, or maybe shouldn't. Um, well, I was thinking, um, I watched it recently with my little man, mm-hmm. um, Incredibles three. Yeah, that's a good that's one. That's what I'd like to see. That's a good that's, one. That's I, a good shot. I, Sean does love the Incredibles. I, I love it. Love it to bits. And and it was. Uh, there was quite a big gap between the first and the second. There can be maybe mm-hmm. another gap between the second and third till it has something to say. I'm um, gonna go. I'm gonna go left field. I think Sean's not really. Sean's trying to lead us down a path because we know him really well. I reckon it's a third Chronicles of Narnia film. <laughs> well, I did. I didn't even know that there there wasn't a third one. I knew there was a first one. <laughs> There's some Prince Caspian. That's something. One of them's called Prince. That Caspian. was that was number two, and okay. then they haven't done a third. At least well, I don't think they have. Maybe I, I maybe I've got that wrong. Out, really. I've got a good one. I've got a good one. Three men and a teenage. <laughs> we haven't had. We haven't got three men and a baby. Look three men and a little lady. Three? Is that a thing? Look who's talking three. Honey, I shrunk the Thrids. third thing. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk Just kids the with a three at the end, or. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I shrunk myself. Is that is that a film? I genuinely don't know. Oh, you shouldn't actually, there might have been three topic. of them. Mm. Oh, ah, uh, Home yeah, Alone. Yeah, reboots is that's a different episode, <laughs> my friends. There's a Home Alone three, isn't there? There is, and a four and a five, uh, and yeah. I'm even I'm fairly certain there's a six as well. Fair enough. Um, but no, uh, see, I I've picked one. Um, I've picked a film today that uh, it's I haven't just picked it because of the subject matter, although it's easy to think that initially. Um, I also sort of picked it because of its indelible mark on cinema. Um, I think the way it uses genre to tell a relatable human drama and comment on the human condition, I genuinely think it manages to do that whilst also being what is ostensibly a horror film. So, um, if you haven't... Sean's film to read coming right out there. (laughs) Mm, So if you haven't already figured it out, um, uh, I've selected the 28 Days Later series. So Okay. Danny nice. Boyle directed 28 Days Later. He did it after The Beach. Um, Alex Garland wrote it. We'll talk more about Alex Garland later. Um, you might know him recently. Um, he, did, he directed Ex Machina. He wrote and directed Ex Machina. He directed Annihilation. Um, and The Beach. Yes. he wrote the, Did he write The Beach as well, Alex Garland? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was Danny Boyle's film before 28 Days Later. And I think, well, with, we, I think you could fill a whole series about The Beach, but... Um, let's just let's just focus on 20 days later. Um, I think uh, Garland recently did Devs, a TV show that was really interesting. He's quite a sort of cutting edge. He's sort of like a new wave intellectual, but like also he's really grounded. If you see him in interviews, he doesn't truck with like the Hollywood nonsense. You know, he's British. He has a different sensibility he brings to it, and he and I think he he likes to work on sort of prominent, um, forward looking sort of science fiction which i think you could argue zombies and and that sort of side of horror is 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 sort of science fiction as well um if you i i rewatched this recently um i i know that contagion spiked didn't it at the start of the lockdown at the start of the pandemic sorry um the the steven soderbergh film contagion spiked everywhere video on demand and yeah. like people were buying it watching mm-hmm. it um, I'm surprised that 28 Days Later hasn't been revisited. And I genuinely think it's... Or Outbreak. Or Outbreak. Outbreak, the one with the monkey. Yeah. 
<laughs> this might, I mean, there is a it's monkey at the start of this one, but it's but it's very different. That's true, yeah. Um, I feel like, Sean, did we have a pirate copy of this when we were younger? I feel like I remember watching it on video. Online, are we? <laughs> no, because you After wouldn't steal a DVD. all those VHSs video. we watched, you wouldn't steal a... Yeah. You wouldn't steal a purse. You wouldn't steal a DVD. You wouldn't steal a woman's purse. But I, I, I feel like, because I remember bag. watching it, but like it was really scratchy. I think one of our au pairs brought it over from another country. That's how we get away with well, it, because it wasn't us. Because it wasn't us. We, we need to break down <laughs> that sentence off the <laughs> One of our au pairs. We, uh, yeah, listen, yeah. But there, um, if there is demand, we can go into the backstory of actually how I think Ryan and I got into some elements of cinema because it, it was it, it, we did have a few au pairs back in the day who would bring films to us that we would never ever have imagined that we would watch, right? And it's sort of, and I think a lot of filmmakers and, and critics and so on, they have that sort of. There's always that story. There's always that thing that brought cinema to them in an unusual way, right? They watched it too young and they watched it illegally or something so there's so uh, but i know what you're thinking just to counter that um i i know what you're thinking and it's because it, it was shot i mean i listen everybody it was the days of lime wire when you oh, were young. It was shot on handy cams because wasn't it, it was shot on dv cameras right so that's what you're thinking of yeah. it, it had that sort of um dark well it was yeah it was, it was noisy visually noisy is what it, you know that's what it's yeah. called it was um it was lo-fi um, and rewatching it recently, because I also looked at a few reviews for the Blu-ray and stuff like that before before I bought it, because I've had the DVD for ages. Um, it 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 still it's, it doesn't hold up. It can't be uh, remastered. It's like it's it's on an old format. DV, I mean, Hi8 DV. They're some of the first cameras I ever used. So I'm from this strange, where, you know, we're from this strange in between generation that didn't come in with with good digital photography like now. Um, and didn't manage to work with 35mm 16, Super 16 cameras, but came in at the mini DV high eight sort of um, digital revolution in inverted commas that meant that everything was 480p standard, def standard definition, right? So um, so now it, lo it looks terrible, but what I've realized is whilst it doesn't hold up visually, it holds up almost like a record. So it looks like a record of a, of a time past. So because it was made with the technology of the time, it was made with the technology that people would have been, uh, this is pre-camera phone, really. So it would have been the way that footage overseas in, in war was captured. It would have been the way that uh, you would have seen um, anything online would have probably been captured by a, a mini DV camera and thrown onto some sort of uh, you know site somewhere that you had to hunt to find. So I think it's got, so I remember it being really frightening. So at the time, the film was shot yeah. in the way that you would see newsreel footage of of you know the iraq war and stuff like that like it was it was it was quite groundbreaking so i'll give it that that even though if you watch it now it's it's it does look yeah like we pirated it um <laughs> i still can i can still remember the shot of the blood drip yeah. going into his I eye remember that as i can well. still remember yeah. that shot and that's the thing about that movie is that immediacy it's it feels like I don't know, because it feels a bit home video, you're sort of drawn into it. And those things stick out, right? There are scenes and moments in there, like the first bit where, um, man, it was so shocking to me watching it. When they go into the shop and her mate's been bitten yeah. and she just hacks into pieces. Just straight away. And you'd never seen a movie like that before. You'd never seen something where, where that flipped. You know, if in a zombie film before that, before 28 Days Later, it's difficult to remember, but they would have had a lovely chat and they slowly, he would have turned over two or three days, you know, and somebody would have slowly evolved into something else and all the time they go and talk about their regrets and helping everybody out and it was just a whole different thing. Um, but when 28 Days Later came along, um, and it's 2002, um, it just, it, it sort of blew the, I know they're not zombies, they're rage-infected humans, but it, but it blew the zombie genre out of the water and it just changed everything from that point onwards, I think. Um, to say to, to say nothing about the fact that it sort of mimics the old. I mean, at that time, if you wanted to see an old B movie horror film, you would have seen it in that quality. You would have seen an old print that someone had had in their loft, you know, and they would have brought it down and and put it on a projector. So it's so. So it, what are we doing? What are we doing with twenty eight? Is also sort of um, quite sort of. What are we doing with twenty eight days later then? Well, I think what's important to to remember is that it had a sequel, right? Um, Fair enough. So it had yeah. a sequel called 28 Robert Weeks Robert Carlyle. Later. Yeah, Robert Carlyle. Um, a couple of other. I mean, Hawkeye's in it. Jeremy let's Renner, not, not Idris Elba. Hawkeye's in it. Yeah, yeah. Idris is in it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's it's a quite, it's a really competent sequel. I just want to say that very quickly. So before we move on to the idea um, that we can we can fester 
um, of a third 28 weeks later, which let's be honest is definitely going to be called 28 months later, whether we fictionalize it now or whether it's made by Danny Boyle and co in the future, it's definitely <laughs> going to be called 28 months later. And there's no question, you just don't mess with that, right? Um, but 28 weeks later, I think despite it, its third act and despite being um, not really a patch on the original, um, it still has a fantastic sort of opening. It has a fantastic core of like zombie transmission. So there's like a carrier, not to give too many spoilers, but there's like a carrier that's not that's infected themselves, but but not rage infected, and it, it's it's the transmission of saliva that that moves it from a sort of inert carrier. I don't know the medical terms, but perhaps we should in this you know living in this day and age, and moves it to the um, to the sort of villain of the piece you know Robert Carlyle and you have his survivor's guilt don't you and you have the the guilt of what he did to his family to to save his own life and so that very is very thematically strong and then you have him chase them through the film as this sort of villain that, that it's more than just a person that's infected you know there's there's that sort of um guilt and everything uh, running through that so I think that's really genuinely um exquisite and I remember the shot of the door closing and I remember the way that the camera follows him you know sweeping away so I think it's iconic in its own way, um, but there's not much more to say about it than that, other than that it was like the good stopgap between 28 days later and our 28 months later that we're about to pitch. <laughs> so what happens at the end of 28 months later? Sorry, 28 weeks later, so that we can potentially well, start see the, the, the films theorizing are, the films are only sort months. of loosely connected so um obviously it's they're both set in britain and they both um uh, one takes place 28 weeks later obviously um they're trying to re, re sort of um, populate london because the uh the rage infected humans or zombies uh, are dying of starvation so that's what happens actually at the end of 28 days later so they realize that after about that period of time which perhaps maybe they picked the date. I was watching it with my fiance. She said, why is it called 28 weeks later? I was like, I don't know, because it sounds cool. But actually talking about it now, maybe it's because they um, that's somehow some sort of soft limit for the human body if it doesn't require sustenance. I'm happy to be corrected in the comments. I really don't know. Um, I think after water, we'd be dead pretty quick, actually. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's only a handful food, of days with water, isn't it? Um, mm. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it's worth looking into why they call it 28 days later, specifically. Um, because it's it's become a bit of a sort of cultural name. It doesn't. I've sort of forgotten to even think about why it was called that. Because we think about twenty eight days later as as the film. Um, so so the the zombies are starving to death, um, and that happens at the end of twenty eight days later. And that's uh, I think I, I don't want to give away too much about the ending of that movie because. But um, Sean, the film is like. 10 years old man if they haven't seen it by now screw it. well you'd think so but there are so many people that like you know that you grow up and you go what you haven't seen like aladdin and they're like no i saw it it had will smith in it and you're like oh damn like there's a whole every every sort of um generation that comes out they have to look backwards at movies they they, they start with what they know and then they then they sort of open the gates backwards so i wouldn't want to ruin 28 days later um because it's got some amazing uh, moments in it um and we can maybe if talk you like about the if you like it. peaky blinders audience if you like peaky blinders <laughs> it's got, it's got Killian, Killian murphy, murphy without a nice haircut and uh any muscle so you know go back and look at skinny weird face <laughs> killian murphy and then killian, you know, there you go. killian man yeah and it has Naomi harris in it it's, it's one of her sort of early performances as well brendan gleason plays such a he's the heart of the film and we will get to that in what i've imagined for 28 months later um but so just before we go into that i would i would say um, I think it's just important to, to go over very briefly. Um, zombies were a sort of, uh, they were like a voodoo thing, right? So anybody who's done a bit of research into this knows that the word zombie is it's like a voodoo folk tale. And they're not really this flesh eating zombies. It's, I think they're more of a sort of, they're sort of goofy and it's, it's, they're definitely close to the, to the George Romero zombies. So George Romero made Night of the Living Dead. He made these monsters. He, he created them. And he called them zombies. He took the, the sort of voodoo curse idea and he threw them onto um, uh, just onto these sort of shambling brains eating, sort of flesh eating type uh, type creatures. Isn't it like an allegory for consumerism? Well, no, it's, well, it's, it's a good thing that you said that. So I, I would think that with Night of the Living Dead, it touches and they all touch on a, a lot of subjects that, that they share a lot of subjects. But Night of the Living Dead has a... Uh, a lot of messages about racism 
embedded within the creature. So zombies are, are goofy, they're stupid. Generally speaking, they're stand-ins for something else. They are the metaphors, you know? Like with a lot of other mm. villains, they can be villainous. With a lot of other monsters, they can be monstrous. But zombies, they often, as silly as it sounds, they often represent something. Um, with, with Dawn of the Dead, it was consumerism, capitalism. Um, with Day of the Dead, it dealt with sort of gov- you know sort of governing structures, militarism, stuff like that, science, um, and the sort of the battle between military and science. Um, I have no idea what the Dawn of the Dead remake by Zack Snyder th- ha- meant. Um, is that the one with excess, uh, is that the one with um, unknowingly Ving Paris Rains Hilton and, in it? Oh, pro- oh, probably, mate. I, I haven't seen it in so long. Um, Shaun of the Dead, you know, it'd be hard to to not. Um, sort of the zombies were a catalyst to sort of shake the characters out of depression, ennui, this sort of lost age where they haven't quite reached a midlife crisis, but they haven't quite, ta- they can't quite fall back on being young anymore. So it sort of captured, it really captured that feeling at that time, you know. Um, so 28 Days Later comes out um, after 9-11. Um, you can imagine that it was written very quickly, which I think is is actually a positive for this film. Um, and it was obviously made very quickly, and that's why they used the DV cameras. Um, but it definitely is rooted in the post-9-11 rage. And that's why it's called rage. That's why the, the virus is rage. Um, it's... Uh, they they even at the start the scientist says something along the lines of if you if you are trying to cure something you need to know what the disease is that what are they infected with they're infected with rage so they're trying to the scientists at the start are trying to find a solution to why people are feeling this way and they're pumping these images into these um, right at the start it's not even subtle they're pumping these images of of uh, you know of sort of the, the world in chaos directly to these these monkeys in a lab. Um, and effectively, um, the film is about rage, how you are, you can be infected by rage, by being around rage, how rage can, um, uh, I don't know, you are sort of manipulated and directed, um, knowingly or unknowingly, towards rage. And at the time, I think, post 9-11, that was happening to a lot of people. They were finding that anger was turning to rage, and perhaps it was, they didn't know why, they didn't know where it had come from. So I think that's something fair to say about what the sort of zombies represent in um, in the film, and and yeah, and so so that's that's one side of the coin. The other side is the creative side, which which the film rippled into uh, in, to change the entire genre um, and horror in many ways as well. Right, so if you're ready, I, I will give you um, the opening. I have the opening and a rough framework for and some things I want to explore for 28 months later, but I don't have the exact details. And, and if any of your ideas can plug into it, um, into any of the missing bits and pieces, that would be amazing. Um, and if you guys don't like it, then we can move away from it and, and pick up one, somebody else's idea. But the, the... I'm just going to throw this down down the gully. Yeah. If if the if the main character is not um, tied to the previous films, John Boyega. So I would instantly say yes, Straight but in. but he was in Attack the Block, and you don't want to sort of put the idea of Attack the Block into the minds of people watching 28 months later. See, I mean, I don't have. It's fantastic casting, but you some, when you cast, and I'm sure the Pearsons throwback to our heat we'll be able to attest that like you've got to take into account their previous works as well so if you're watching this and, and they're fighting rage infected people and you're thinking hey that's kind of like the way he bonked that silly alien on the head in that fun alien movie it's so, it can pull you out of the movie right but if there's someone whatever traits you liked about John Boyega if there's a comparable actor then then you know that's we'd have to chuck them in there um but yeah, so but but keep it coming. Keep keep these casting ideas coming because I don't really have anyone in mind for the film at all. Um, and the first one had a lot of good British talent in it, and I think that that's really key as well. That was where I was coming from. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, so the idea came to me um, genuinely, right? I'll tell you how it came to me. It came to me in a dream, and this has never happened to me before in my life, right? My <laughs> dreams are absolutely meaningless and they're nonsense. And it's all the stuff I get up to normally, and it's just, which sort of maybe so, explains why. Go on. Zombie dreams are my most reoccurring nightmare, and they always follow the same format. 
there's an infection we hold up somewhere that summer gets overrun every single time i'll get them maybe two three times a year mate you should write them and down <laughs> I have to. I I can. I I I I lucid dream, so I can remember a lot of my dreams even now. Like, um, and I can tell you every single one of them that how it's happened, where it's happened, what's happened, because there's because they're that visceral to me. Yeah, yeah. My most reoccurring anxiety dream is that I haven't been to my maths A level class for a month, and it's coming up to the exam, and I haven't revised. <laughs> still, still, like to this day. Still, still now to this day, and I'm like, I wake up, I'm like, you haven't been to school for twenty odd years, mate. Just. <laughs> Is this because you are good at maths and, and it's the subject you wanted to do well in, or is it because you're not good in it and it's the subject that you think, damn, I need to work really hard to be good at it? Come on, you know me, Sean. It's because I'm brilliant <laughs> at maths. <laughs> I think, I think, so So it was a it was a dream I had, and I was, I swear to God, I was in the dream, I was sitting in the cinema, and I looked over to, I was with some people, I can't remember who they were, and I looked back and I was waiting for the film to start. And on the screen, as it came up, it was like one of these teasers that is, you know, the teaser that's like a minute of, of the film and then you'll have a smash, smash, smash cut of a bunch of teaser bit elements to it. Um, and this is how it started. Uh, it started with this droning noise. You're not quite sure what it is. It's sort of unnatural, rattling metal. Um, and you can see with facing you is Ewan McGregor. It was Ewan McGregor's face. But he's got his long hair from like, I don't know whether he had long hair and shallow grey, but he had his long hair. Um, he's dishevelled, he's battered, right? He's, he's absolutely smashed his entire sort of face and body. He's been beaten. He's completely naked and he's on his knees with his, with his hands tied up. And you pull you around him and you pull back and you see two other people next to him. You know, you don't know who they are, but they're in the same position. They're beaten, they're naked, they're strapped up. Um, they're, they're, you know, their hands are bound. There are armed guards either side of them. And what you realise that you, the noise you're hearing is that you're inside a fuselage of an airplane. And they are, all three of them, are lined up on their knees in front of the side-loading bay door, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, shoulder, the soldiers are yelling stuff. You know, it's unintelligible at this point. You can't really figure it out. The big door slides open and... The three men are thrust out. Um, they've got parachutes on, but they fall, and you fall with them. And you know, it's one of those epic shots. You know, you, you, the one you sort of think, but na- but naked, but, but naked, naked parachuting. Blood, they're just their blood sort of flying off them. They've got they're going red raw with like you know with the wind um, hitting them. Um, they all spiral in different directions because they have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Right? They've probably never done this before. Um, he looks at his his arm or his hand, and he's got like a sort of uh, count to 10 pull cord or something. Do you know what I mean? Like one of those sorts of things. He only re- just realizes he's got it last minute. Um, bang, pulls the cord, lands, and he lands in the middle of, of an absolute fucking, war, just a war zone of chaos. He lands basically in the middle of a rage infected sort of city, suburb, town, somewhere, and there's just shit going on everywhere. And you recognize, so in the cinema, in my dream, I didn't know what this film was. So I was just like, what's this film? This is going to be amazing. Um, And as he landed and all the chaos went on, you start to see that they're rage infected. You start to see that they're, um, you know, from the 28 Days Later franchise. Um, And then it says from visionary director Danny Boyle, you know, director of 28 Days Later. This is literally what happened in my dream. And I was like, oh, talking to all the people around me, I was like, oh, shit, it's a sequel to, I didn't know this was coming out. I didn't know this film was coming out. Did you know this film was coming out? And then it had a load of quick cuts of, you know, that I can't remember, obviously, but of the movie itself. And I was sort of like, from that moment, I woke up and I thought, like, if you took 28 Days Later and Escape from New York and you put them together, that's essentially what my, the baseline of my pitch for 28 months later is, that a bunch of people are parachuted into a hot zone, told, you know, if you don't get X, the MacGuffin, out of this thing within X amount of time, then you are dead. You know, I haven't really figured out the ticking clock element, you know, with it, it's um, a bomb in Escape from New York. It's uh, it's something else in Escape from LA. I can't remember, but there's something, um, a ticking clock that means they have to pursue this mission and they have to go into a hot zone. They're expendable and they have to okay. get out. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. Playing, can you just refresh me of what it happens in 28 weeks later with the 
the sort of decellulized version of the rage or whatever it is. Well, all I know, I, I can't quite remember what happens at the end because I haven't seen it as recently as 28 Days Later, but I know it, that... It, do the... you say it's only passed on via saliva? Well, I guess no, I think... it can be passed on the same way as it could in the first film, right? Yeah, so wasn't it that her, like there was a woman who was who who basically was immune but could still carry um, carry the rage virus mm. and then she ended up kissing Robert Carlyle mm. and he gets it and then he goes off on one yeah. and he like kills everyone. So I imagine she was in retrospect, and... she was in shock or something. That was really what was wrong with her. She wasn't under the influence of any sort of thing, but she did have it within her. You could see it so, in her eyes, right? Or but like I mean, it, it, if it was the virus, and but then I think at the end. Didn't they cross through the Channel Tunnel or something? Didn't they get across into... They crossed across... The last thing mm. we saw was that they crossed into mainland Europe. Mm. So that it's it stopped being... Because in the first one, we realised that... It was quarantined. 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 Yeah. It's a good idea, by the way. <laughs> and then they... Political. And then... and But in 28 days later, yeah. they get out. And it's so it's Wait, the it theory is it started yeah. infecting the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to I want to maybe play with this idea, right? I want to play with two things. One thing is that the this whole thing started with uh well, so I want to say this. So, if zombies are an, an allegory for something that's happening in the time or rage infectious monsters or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, a huge thing for us uh in today's society is how people feel about climate change. We had those problems in London with Extinction Rebellion where people were standing on top of trains, they were disrupting travel. Um, you know, it's sort of, it, it, it's what's been happening in the last couple of years. So I like the idea that it goes back to that group of the ecological um, oh, fighters that's, that's who, yeah. who started the whole thing. It's like their leader is in this location and they basically want to get him out because they're going to try him for... Oh, that's really good. Uh, they're like a crimes... Um, like, not... I can't, I can't think of the term. Like, war so crimes. So they have to extradite. Basically, it's like an illegal extradition in a hot... In a sort of... Zo- in a zombie, quote-unquote, hot zone. And the reason why those guys are beaten... The reason why those guys are beaten is because they are, have that same carrier to be immune. So they can be dropped into hot zones where it's like... If they get bitten once, they're okay... And they can still fight. So, you know, I'm, I, very similar to The Last of Us Part 2, where Ellie is having to fight monsters as well as uh, people. But, you know, are people the, yeah. uh, but are people the real monster? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that, but, that, but that's monster, the type of thing. So, like, that's how they yeah, could, yeah. that's how we get a sort of this. This is like the aliens to alien. You know, it's suddenly like dollar signs being is it, drawn. Is it the Suicide Squad? version as well are these criminals that are immune mm. expend just yeah to get uh, are being dropped into these places to get uh pardons or immunities for what they've done in the past which would allow us to have some hardcore people yeah involved well, in this it. is a little bit like I mean? predators isn't it i sort of quite the, the third one that they did which by the way would have been right for this if they hadn't because uh, i've got a good <laughs> idea for predator um but yeah so I, I that's an interesting point i sort of like that they are people who we buck the trend of predators and they're like almost like um, uh, white collar criminals because being white collar criminals, they're intelligent, I suppose, to a degree. You can sort of pretend that in a movie sort of way. They're intelligent. They were in a prison um, that they should not have been in anyway. Um, So if they lasted that long in the prison, then they can possibly, the justification is they can last long enough in this place. So so they can talk their way out of trouble the same way. I mean, maybe you even have like... I guess you also then can have different extraditing places you're not even linked to one um one nation one zone. or something even yeah so and then you could have you could have your vin diesel kind of action moment but uh, against sort of someone more macgyvery type thing and that they're trying to extradite different things and one's trying to get the lead of this extent but they're all trying to get people and they don't know why they're trying to get these people and maybe one of them's a scientist that has potentially come up with a vaccine mm-hmm uh, um, but but they're stuck in the middle of a hot zone. Yeah. So it's all about extracting people rather than things. Again, bringing it round to the idea of people being the salvation for this. Yeah, and the catalyst sort of this thing. Issue. I sort of mm, like yeah. the idea that it's perhaps it's it's almost like illegal, right? So it's they're not extraditing them. They extraditing them because Britain wants to have the cure first. They do not want 
you know, Europe to have the cure. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. Like it's not even... You're bringing that in as well, are we? <laughs> nice. Well, it's just, I think you want to lean on... The I think Sean, Sean's thinking about Metal Gear Solid 3. I think that's what it was so cool. <laughs> but I think that's what you want to do. You want to lean on it being like... Um, I mean, what I found really fascinating is that like... So, so it is hard to say something original in these kinds of films, especially about the world. So it's it's very difficult. You want to give this dystopian future, but you don't want to fall too much into any of the things you've already seen before. Um, Rewatching 28 Days Later, I realised that the opening of it is him walking around Bank, walking around Westminster, walking around like Horse Guards and other sorts of places like that. Empty. Yeah, it's, it's empty. Um, and it's almost That was like the most shocking thing about the film, wasn't it? So yeah. shocking. Because they'd never really done it before. It was still a little sort of pre-CGI where you could easily do that sort of stuff. It was pre-sort of mm -hmm. like um, pre-rendered backgrounds and things, like computer-generated backgrounds. So it was quite a revelation. It's quite a shock. And again, that's something that you take for granted these days. But like, yeah, back then mm. that was, it was one of the selling points, right? But particularly the fact that it starts in Westminster and it starts near the Houses of Parliament, it starts around there. I think that that's, they could have put that anywhere, even in London and been sort of shocking and interesting. But they chose mm -hmm. the places where uh, the decisions on war are made, right? So particularly post 9-11, it would have been, you know, they picked the places where... Um, as if the people that had made these decisions um, have have vacated, they've left. It's barren. The lead, the, you know, the leaders are gone. The people who put you in in peril, they disappear. You know, like a sort of David Cameron type. Um, so <laughs> it's so you sort of, but so but because of that, I, th I feel like it's you want to do something similar with this. You want to say something quite political with it because I. Th but obviously, that's not the main point of the film, but. I think that's something that the, the original film did really well. Um, I I don't know if this makes sense. Like, I don't want to do something about immigration, but I'm interested in doing something about borders. So I'm interested in doing something about false borders, about, you know, um, I don't know, corporate entities, you know, and like lines on a map. They're all false borders. And what they do is they other the people on each side of the border. So whilst it's not necessarily an immigration story, I would say it's almost like once these people band together from all different nations and all different sort of places, it's a pilgrimage back home. So the first film was very much um, a family pilgrimage journey to safety. And then the second half was uh, military sort of, um, and then it, it sort of shifted into a variety of different things, um, dealing with the effects of war and 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 other many, many other things that, that, are, you know, that, that are slightly more awkward to try and discuss for me, because um, I don't know. I don't feel like I can speak to it, um, but I want to do the inverse. So the first is the is the sort of the rage infected part, and then the second half is this journey. Um, especially if they've got some of the people right, and they're all together, and they're all journeying on this pilgrimage together. Um, so this is this is saying if we're if we're with the, so then I don't understand what these three people like. If you're opening with three people battered and bruised and then being dropped, it is like. Chekhov's beating like you need to understand why they were beaten how they were beaten why they're dropped in a hot zone rather than just oh we're three best friends that I ever could ask for and then we're just going to go home now so I like, don't even think the three of them should speak the same language that's what I like about it and I don't think I think it will become apparent just like predators that. yeah that is true <laughs> um so is it three different people from three different I sort countries of like try, all trying to find yeah. this one person in the hot spot I sort of like that. I, I know, like, they, sort of cinematic. Do they end up a... having to to work together, even though they don't want to? Just to like get out predators, of the hot spot with this person, <laughs> just like predators. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah, abs absolutely, they have to. And I think, like, the idea, like, taking this war of mine, you know, the video game as a touchstone, is that it felt like a dystopian future, sort of post-apocalyptic thing, game, um, resource management type game. But really, it was the effects of war now on the war-torn areas of cities and towns nearby um, hot zones and things. So I want this film to be like that because you have to, the idea of where the, the creatures are and what they're doing, that I, I'm not sure about. But I do know that regardless of the state that these places are in, there are people in the real world that do not have the luxury that we do to be able to talk about war like it's something we love in movies, right? They, some people, they are born into uh, war-torn hot zones um, and they live there, and that's their life for however long that is, you know. And they, they can, you, can you say that again, but like Solid Snake? 
<laughs> I would I would love to if it didn't uh, belittle the, the point. Mm. Um, but it, it does sound very Metal Gear Solid 4. I'm going to throw it because that definitely sounds like Metal Gear Solid 4. But it's true. I mean, the thing is, even with Metal Gear Solid 4, like, did we see a single civilian? No. Like, did we see what had happened to the, to the fallout of these things? We see it on the news, but we haven't been on a journey with these people. And I feel like that's really something that you could, you could, uh, for example, um, I mean, our, our, t- our tax, I'm not trying to get too political, but it doesn't take too much to imagine that our tax uh, money goes towards funding wars in other countries, right? To, to whether they are um, wars that we should be fighting or not, uh, I'm not, um, uh, you know, quick to answer that. Um, I think, you know, the CIA sanctioned killings, they, they spread throughout a region and they change it indelibly, right? Whether they change it for the better or not, again, I don't know that. Um, But these are things that we have the luxury not really to have to worry about um, day to day. Um, You know, we sell arms. The UK sells arms. America sells arms. And they sell them to people who often turn their backs on them. It's quite funny when you look at it all. There's a a comedy to be made out of, like, you know, uh, what happened, you know, to to, to the Americans, uh, to to places in the Middle East that the Americans trained. Uh, and gave weapons to and what happened with that training on those weapons. So I think that's interesting to me, that we all sort of are allowed not to worry about this stuff because government does it for us. Um, I would like the film to drop you directly into the laps of these people. Um, with, But you use science fiction, as you as we often do, to draw parallels to parts of the world that we often don't think about. So that's essentially what I'd like to do with, with the film. Um, so if we could set it in an incredibly... Uh, war-torn part of the world um, and you can make it I mean Danny Boyle is the kind of guy to make it as authentic as possible you know second maybe only to Michael Winterbottom or someone you know who could really actually do something positive with the film um, Georgia what the the country Georgia yeah because of all the stuff going on with Russia trying to invade the borders and stuff like that so you have this European style forest and city world that is war torn in currently current times but then there's also um it's very brutalist design it's very has that brutalist design to sure. it but also yeah. you have um then the the acts of the rage infection what that does to that sort of area so you get your best of both worlds you're not just doing another middle eastern yeah nay where people (laughs) like you know there's there's uh (laughs) homeland is racist written on the wall in arabic and you have to make them home you're not doing that you know you're keeping it in this sort of like uh, big big pine forests and like um you know brutalist structures and stuff like that and then that cross having to trans and the the complete differences in um climate because this is going to test my geography but i do feel like georgia is is as it comes south down towards some more of the middle eastern country so as you get further south it becomes more deserty mm-hmm. uh, and the further north you go it becomes more mountainous so you have a visual that I, the people at home can grab a hold of but you're not telling a cliche story or one that does a disservice by the way like i don't i don't want anyone to think like oh we're using science fiction 28 days later and zombies to to sort of you know we're having fun with the idea of of um of of war but i think instead of the way it was perceived in 2002, I think that we can see maybe a new side of war that we, we're not normally allowed to see. We are not, you know, the media doesn't really allow us. They show, show us a few snippets and then that's all you get. Um, and you're not really allowed to go f- deeper than that. So, um, so yeah, that's really good, Ryan. I really like that. And, and I would bring back Danny Ball because he would be the sort of person to make a film that has a, has a purpose. It would be able to bring authenticity to it. Um, I think... So do you twist that when they finally get to the um, activist that we find out that they were paid by the government to break in to the government lab to release the apes as a test to check out, test the virus as a biological weapon. So it wasn't an accident at all. That yeah, that's the that's the deleted scene ending. That's the ending that you shoot and then you decide whether to put it in yeah. according to test screenings, right? You you get you gauge yeah. the volatility of the world at the point you put it out. But yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. an interesting idea, isn't it? Um, and then you worry about like then where where does that fall in terms of like feeding conspiracy theories and stuff? Because like you know when you start talking about the government, 
even just saying the government, you sound like you're opening the <laughs> yeah. door to the, the CIA government. sanctioned killings. You sound like you're opening the door to conspiracies, but in actual fact, this stuff is well documented, right? Um, uh, and and sort of well, you know, it's, it's official secrets acts reveal all this information. So. It's it's a shame. It's a shame your dream was three people being dived into war torn areas. Because 28 months later would have been an amazing prequel where it ends with them releasing the monkeys and starting 28 days later. Oh, that's that's also really true. But so then, the 28, the 28 months, you think true. it's yeah. oh well, it's it's after all this has happened, but it it's like the sort of the way that the Joker is about his mental health decline and becoming the Joker, the the new one with Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Um, it's like that. It's, it's like all these things will happen, and then twenty eight months later, it's what it's what causes them to release the rage virus. And you that, put that's really you, maybe idea, you right? do it before, and you have nine eleven in there. This is just we can we oh can cut God, this. Yeah. That, no, listen, if it's, it's a bad it's, idea. No, I think it's a great idea, but it's it's too dicey for me to go to go into. But 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 you have so you have something like disasters. You have something that drives a person to want to then believe in the earth and get their earth to heal. Then get indoctrinated by someone by a demigorgon that is willing to speak on a level that they understand because they are vulnerable coerce them into doing something like this did this you know if you swap out and that's the best pitch you've come up with yeah i know slash <laughs> it's a shame that only five people will listen to the Wasted. lockdown special right? i know <laughs> but the the thing is like you have you know you're able to do we do this in today's society you swap out you swap out rage infected monkeys with a suicide bomber and you see all this stuff about people being coerced into becoming suicide bombers right we see mm -hmm. it a lot which is why you'd need something different but no, this I was just a tangent All right groups are, uh, are rapidly growing and they are brainwashing people and 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 elements of the media and elements of even politicians are brainwashing are complicit within brainwashing um the alt-right mm. uh, we've seen it here with anti-vaxxers we've seen it well we saw it a long time ago with anti-vaxxers but we've seen it recently with anti-maskers or whatever they're called yeah you, know, you see these groups these people that are complicit within that um i don't think it necessarily makes a good zombie film to be to be fair because i think the genre is what brings yeah. people in but it is a very very interesting film in its own right but the zombies are the people <laughs> man the zombies are the ones believing it you need to release those monkeys so the zombies can't see what's going on. <laughs> this is like a Cloverfield. You remember when they tried to make Extended Universe out of Cloverfield? It's like one of those, you know? And there's like, this is like the prequel that's made for like, same budget as the original, $8 million or whatever. It's made by some students somewhere and like Danny Boyle's pr executive produces it. Like, I like it. I think it's a great idea. Um, and genuinely quite, a, quite an interesting and intelligent one. Um, but I just can't see the zombies, man. I just can't see the zombies in it. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't see them. Um, but see... If we're going for an idea of 28 days later that's similar, that takes place up to 28 months later, that takes place afterwards, um, I'm interested in, first of all, um, I don't know the ticking clock. I don't know what's going to make these people um, keep this up. You know, like, I, I can't think of, you know, in a in a very bad movie, they'd, they'd inject them with something that, like, you have 48 hours before it hits your bloodstream. Then, okay, you know. I, I listened to, in my news report that I listened to in the mornings, how they are tr using AI to track elephants from space using satellites, right? So maybe one of the things that they are tracking, and I don't know how it's possible, but you have a horde, right? A horde is moving, and they're tracking this via satellite, and our person is in this location, and the horde's going to get to you in three days, and then this whole city's going to be thingy. If you wanted to, if you, I mean, that is the extreme of the zombies, like a, a moving horde. And again, I am just completely and utterly stealing from The Last of Us 2. But, <laughs> that, you know, gone, you, but yeah. you'd be able to see that via satellite, right? There'd be, so, be millions of monsters moving forward. I mean, that's whatever. the ticking clock for them to get some of their reprobates who are immune, quote unquote, in there. But what keeps them from escaping? This is just one of the things that like very early on, like if you can figure that out, then some other things might drop into place. So like what stops them from just getting on a plane somewhere and going somewhere else? Or what stops them from escaping to a place where they know is less dangerous? Um, well, I, I'm not saying that you that you don't have monsters here, but like there's a difference between a hundred monsters and a horde, right? Sure. And that's sort of where it is. It's almost like these are the scout monsters and the horde moves like a hive mind towards it. I am just literally just throwing stuff out here. But yeah, yeah, like, sure. <laughs> that is, you know, that is how you have a ticking clock when it comes to zombie movies, right? Because if they're, it, I, but also that, that's that, oh no, I've just, I've just, I've just come up with it. 
in the plane, they get injected with the virus. You've got three days before you turn. We've got the cure. You need to pull this guy out. So I, so and I, that's you would plot. think that you would, th- and that, and that is a and, completely valid idea. But there's a part of me that goes, is there? You veer into cliche, and the, the, the thing about that is, it could fall on the line of like, yeah, yeah, I love that. That's perfect for the mm. genre. Or it could fall into the sort of like, oh, that sort of thing. That's a bit. Now contrived. I would argue every threequel pulls that out of the bag somehow <laughs> in the way, right? Lord of the Rings, you think about the battles in Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring versus Return of the King. He literally pulls a ghost army out of thin air. Yeah. So I think th- three calls, you know, Matrix, ma- the Matrix versus Matrix Reloaded. You've got Mufumi's Last Stand and all that sort of stuff like that. So I feel like three calls have to go that big. They have to be... They have to take on the elements of the caricatures themselves. We even saw that with, like, John Wick is probably the one that is closest to it, but then he goes and meets the original Hassan Sins in the, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah. In the every, desert. So, you know, most it, every it, third film pushes it just yes. a little bit too far. To Absolutely. Yeah. So the idea that they, that they are injected and they're not and then they're thrown out, but also that doesn't have to be, you know, we are only believing what we see on the screen, right? So you could have a... Um, Kurt's style betrayal at the end where this person is actually dead um like in that game that i cannot remember it's set in dubai spec ops like spec ops yeah, yeah, yeah. like this whole sure. thing has been for now itself sort and... of based on apocalypse now which itself is based yes. on heart of darkness what happens yeah. if they've been injected or had a blood transfusion from one of the immune people so like whoever it was that woman she's been trans- getting blood transfusions giving blood and they've been given a blood transfusion, which makes them immune for three days. And after three oh, days, they're no longer immune. That's good. So if they're in the thing... Yeah, that's excellent. They're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's perfect, because that has what you were talking about, Ryan. It has that idea in it of having, like, the immunity to the virus runs out, but you don't have it, mm. like, the what is a little bit sort of comic booky about, like, you know, it's very escape, very escape from New York, to be fair, which is not terrible, but maybe veers further away from 28 Days Later. Yeah, that's that's quite a good idea. So they have three days before they lose their immunity, so they need to get the hell out of there. That that's there's something in that. Yeah, definitely. We'll revisit this when Danny Ball gives us a call. Um, I so th- th- there are two things. Film stock, I think it's got to be um, it's got to be IMAX. It's going to shoot it on IMAX. So he's going to do the inverse of what he did with with the complete complete opposite, opposite yeah. with what he did. Um, and I think it's because. Um, I think what isn't in- shot on IMAX camera these days? That's yeah, why. well, I think it's important to see everything in its detail. Like if you go, oh, don't let those immigrants into the country. Like we can't even feed our own people, and then you realise what they're escaping from. You might change your opinion on how you discuss it with other people. So if you see the these sorts of things in the fidelity that you would be, you would feel them if you were there. Then maybe it would actually do something. It, it, maybe it has a purpose so i think pin sharp see every detail revel in the in in it like a coliseum of old it's gonna it's just gonna show you the, you know everything on display um and let you sort of fi- figure out how you feel about that i think one of those one of those three that gets dropped then has to be tony jar and or matey boy from the raid i d- <laughs> i think listen I, if you're shooting if you're shooting this line match cameras and you don't want them to speak to each other and let's be honest a film of this magnitude probably going to be funded by china right, anyway do you know, so do you know who you get then um you get the guy who's the villain from the raid 2 that he fights in the in the kitchen right the long-haired scraggly guy looks yeah. like a homeless guy uh, that's, that's also in john mc3 yeah right yeah exactly so you get that guy because he's not the main guy for, he, he doesn't look like a leading man with respect to him he doesn't look like he's straight out of he's ready for the next big sort of you know mm. bong, bong i wouldn't say that ball. to his face though because he could kill you <laughs> 30 hundred ways kill you. um but he's the, he's that's fantastic casting he is perfect for it he's absolutely perfect because he has a sort of <laughs> a deadness behind the eyes that i love um, <laughs> <laughs> no no that's wow. wicked you and mcgregor that guy him third, and a shark <laughs> third person probably and I, I hate to say it this way but if we're gonna if we're talking film pitches it has to be a woman Right, that's how it works. Um, could yeah. it be Naomi Harris's character from the first movie? And there's no explanation as to how she got there, and she barely says anything in the whole movie. And there's no explanation as to where the other character. She are. just hacks people with a machete all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you, it's just Naomi Harris is just one of them. That's it. It's just, they, they don't even bother. I think her name's Selena. They don't even bother explaining what happened to the other people. It's just one of these things where like 
you're not watching a movie. You don't get a chance for them to all sit down and do the exposition with each other. There's just too busy killing too zombies. Too busy killing zombies trying to desperately get out of this place. Um, the other thing, um, and one of the last things I've got to say on it before um, we, we wrap up, or, or before I hear any of your more of your ideas, because it's just the music. It has to be John Murphy. It has to be the guy who did, you know, his work on this and his work on Sunshine are the sort of iconic, it's like Clint Mansell's score for Requiem for a Dream. It like lives on in yep. other medium. He's got, he's got to do all three, hasn't he? He's got, he's got, he's to, got to. He's got to. And he would, he'd do such good work. I don't know how you would pitch to him how very different you want this film to be. Um, hey, John, you know all the cool, subtle stuff that we did mm, about and the stuff that was really like, like that? Yeah. We can do like an action zombie movie. <laughs> just gonna like, and people's heads are going to get chopped off. Uh, can you throw a few stuff, guitars in there and here's an extra two million? Thanks. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> you get him to work with the guy um, who did the Doom games, the recent ones that people liked. Oh, um, He's a good fit for it, isn't he? Oh, As the guitar, I know his name. Him all work with another artist. I really then, love this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name, but he is great. Um, get him to work with John Murphy and that's it. You've got like, you know, and just let them go wild. Mick Gordon. Is yeah, Mick, Mick Gordon. Mick Gordon, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Chuck them both in, Get let them just throw them in a pen and whatever they come up with is is what you use. You know, I sort of like certain films, a little bit like um, Apocalypse Now, certain films, which by the way, I'm now, now more I think about it, is like, it should be one of them that they're finding is like a betrayer to the cause. And that's that's very much like um, Colonel Kurtz and you. Well, yeah. I mean, like, as, as we said, it was like, we were there trying to find the, the leader of the ecological group. Well, this my pitch was the leader of the ecological group who want, who the World Council want to try yeah. for war crimes or crimes against humanity. That's what it is. That's a little bit crimes against hu- humanity. Bit so, off, yeah. And then you have those people who are like, where, you know, where's the best place to hide someone like this in the middle of like, a rage infected area or whatever yeah 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 it's the last An old missile silo or something do you know what i mean like l- long mm. are the days where we worried about nuclear war etc cetera, etc cetera. you can see, hear all that dialogue dripping off now can't you in, in the echoes of a huge silo or maybe i think a silo is a good or, or like maybe where they store nuclear waste yeah that that would be ace because then and then there's the and then there'll be like a whole thing about in, like right? oh the monsters can't smell them through the radiation or whatever yeah, yeah. Or but like then the obviously but then that is slowly killing them as well to go near radiation but the people <laughs> aren't you know the people <laughs> you know the people are like well we've got to live here we've got to live somehow you know and the infected stay away that's quite good i even like you know someone's walking away main character you know someone's told the main character something they're in the missile silo um the main character thinks he said something snappy and snarky but then the sort of the villain or the doctor walks away and he goes uh, there were there were four of these uh, nuclear missiles. You're standing in, you know, what's left of the uh, the fourth one. Nobody knows where it went. You know, there's just sort of this idea yeah. that like, where did it did it kill? That's how the film guessing? ends. <laughs> that they, they, all the all the zombies are, are like converging on them, and they just go. <laughs> end film. That's a very credits. escape from L.A. ending. He hits that button, doesn't he, and like just just yeah. wipes out the entire world. I love it. That again. Naomi Harris. Uh, so she says, "This is for all. The, this is for all those I lost." And then she boom, this is just for all those one. apes. <laughs> this is this the only the only line she God in damn the you, you dirty apes! <laughs> I honestly think she shouldn't say anything and should only and say one thing at the end of the movie. Yeah, that's like that because yeah. I sort of love it when a main she just comes uh, of nothing, course like, all she says is you ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean so the final thing is that um if there was a way to find there's something really fascinating about the first film um it's jim's hello right so he says his hello is very like it's sort of pained but he doesn't really know what's going on so he's, he that's what he's shouting when he's walking through the streets and in the, at the start 20 days later he's shouting hello hello he's sort of it's the very british hello but it's the hello of like is mm. there anyone here uh, later on, he's like, he, there's a dream sequence where he's like yelling it in fear. He doesn't want to be left alone. Um, and, and then there's a few other instances and, and sort of uh, nods to it. And then at the end of the movie, um, that's the, the I'm trying to be a bit vague here, but that is the word they choose to use to signal help. So they don't mm-hmm. use SOS. They don't use that. They use hello. So her final word's got to be goodbye then, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And you you use goodbye in the film or bye in the film at some sort of. Well, that's the first thing that they push them out. Oh, they push them out of the go. plane. Goodbye. That's it. Goodbye. That's it. Because you have to You've find a way to sort of cap off and 
you know, the trilogy. That's literally the only connection that we have to the other two films. And then, I love it. And like, the, and like, if they meet the Curtis character, he's like left the recording and he says it in a very sinister yeah. way. Yeah. Goodbye. It's the metaphor like, of the, you know, whatever. It's the allegory. I, 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 you never got the chance to take me. I took my own life. Goodbye. Like smug. Yeah. 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 I love it. I think, I think that's a, I think that's a pretty solid, I, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a pretty solid pitch, right? And I think that it's, it, you guys have injected enough into it to make it. If well, if it is terrible, then it's also partially your fault. Um, yeah, um, Dan, I would like to I would like to now just uh, Sean doesn't know about this, but I would like to now give you thirty seconds on the clock to do a Sean style summary of Sean's idea for twenty eight weeks. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> this will be good. Yeah. I'm going to um, just... So, right. so what Sean's given us Go. is a, um, a social political breakdown of a zombie movie where zombies are more, you know, about how they feel than what they have. Uh, it's an immigrant kind of based uh, reflection on what we might be talking about in the world. Well, borders are borders, but aren't borders. And how people from around the world can come together to maybe actually realise that it's not worth it in the end anyway and fail and blow up the world. <laughs> And that's um, that was Sean's pitch for you. <laughs> that's quite scarily accurate, actually. Like, <laughs> and that was I I'm, listened to you enough. Kept none I was, of the I was dead on thirty there, seconds as well. But it was just nonsense ramble. It was that was perfect. That was that, <laughs> that was my favourite. Um, oh, thanks for that, Dan I'm, and Ryan. I'm actually quite honoured um, at the Pleasure. accuracy of it. I'm, I'm honoured. Um, so yeah, well, thanks, thanks you two as well um, for 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 your ideas for twenty days later. Nice to catch up. Yeah, again. yeah, always. So, um, hope everybody at home is staying safe, is taking this opportunity to talk to people they haven't spoken to in a while. You know, come and chat with us on uh, on Slash Tube. Come and chat with us on our socials if you've listened to episodes. If you want someone to talk movies with. Um, the way that Taz sh- is still rolling out the absolutely pitches from past he's prolific episodes. isn't he it's fantastic and we, yeah. we want to uh, we, we want more we want more we want um, I mean you can give us anything on social media chat to us reach out for any any reason but if you've got a, a threequel idea for a popular film yeah. Kill Bill that was one that I was toying with for a while um, Anchorman Anchorman is one that I would not have even <laughs> considered um, has this for a left field one the original Charlie's Angels films not TV show, but the terrible oh. McG ones. I'd love to hear a sequel With, to those. You had Full Throttle, didn't yeah, you? Charlie's Angel Charlie's Angel Full, full throttle, throttle didn't make a third one. Um, Fair enough. We've got, I mean, I'm cranking out like, cranking out Crank. Crank's, uh, yeah, crank. crank 1 and 2, didn't get a third one. Donnie Darko. Was there a Transporter 3? There was yes, a Transporter there was. 3. Oh. And a Transporter I mean. 4. You'd be surprised when you look into it how many of them. No, because I thought maybe we watched them. Uh, I might have watched 1, 2, and 3 in a row one night. And they all blurred into one. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just become they one. Do, they do, don't they? Yeah. And that, but that's that's what I mean. There's there's I mean there's always uh, there's Jump Street and Men in Black. Both of them were supposed to get a, a third film that crossed over. And and I, we had the discussion a while ago. We're we're looking to do a little episode about films that got away. So so that would be an exciting one to to get to at some point. The films that that should have been made that weren't. Um, but yeah. So and Babe, who doesn't want to see a third Babe film? Babe Pig in the City. Remember that? No one. I don't remember that. But that was, that was the second one, wasn't it? But yeah, so reach out on our socials, um, slash dupe. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we've got Patreon. Um, you can reach out over on YouTube. Just just uh, get in contact with us. We want to hear from you. So um, thanks, Ryan and Dan, for your time as always um, and uh, your ideas. Thank you. And, Thank you, Sean. Uh, stay safe and we'll keep, we'll keep in touch. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah.